The Republic P-43 Lancer was an American single-engine, low-wing monoplane of all-metal construction developed in 1939 by the Republic Aviation Corporation. With only 272 units built, the P-43 would see limited usage in the U.S. Army Air Corps, the Chinese Air Force, and the famous First American Volunteer Group, who sported the moniker the Flying Tigers but the Lancer would provide a critical evolutionary step between the earlier Seversky P-35 and the more famous and effective Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. The origins of the P-43 are somewhat convoluted, for when the order for the P-35 was placed in 1936 by the Material Division of the U.S. Army Air Corps, they stipulated that the last series of the aircraft should have the 1,200-horsepower Pratt and Whitney R-183019 two-stage supercharged engine. This the Air Corps would nominate as the XP-41 prototype. But Alexander Seversky kept an almost identical version of the XP-41 for himself, with a company designation of AP-4. Here the AP-4 was further redesigned to reduce drag, and experimentation continued with engine cowlings, turbo supercharging and prop size, leading to a terminal overheating issue. On the 22nd of March 1939, the engine caught fire in flight and the AP-4 was lost, but not before impressing the Army Air Corps, who nominated the last iteration of the AP-4 as the YP-43 prototype and ordering 13 units. This is an important move. A Y designation indicates that the aircraft has moved beyond the initial experimental phase and is now a pre-production model. It was around now in April 1939 that Seversky found himself forced out of the company he founded via a bored coup while in Europe on a sales tour. One could speculate on the reasons for his ousting. The Seversky Aircraft Corporation had bled half a million dollars, a significant amount in 1939, but it also may have been a result of his secret deal with the Japanese to sell a version of his P-35 aircraft. Regardless, with a restructure, the company was reborn as the Republic Aviation Company. With Seversky removed, development of the YP-43 forked, attention now turned to lead engineer Alexander Kartvelishvili, who was working on Project AP-10, which would eventually lead to the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and a new prototype based on the YP-43, the XP-44, was built. A bit more on that later. With 54 on order, the first P-43 Lancers were delivered to the U.S. Army Air Corps on the 16th of May, 1941. The specifications the same as the YP-43 prototype, the Lancer had a length of 28 feet 6 inches, a height of 14 feet 1 inch, a wingspan of 36 feet 1 inch, and a wing area of 222 square feet. Powered by the Pratt and Whitney R1830 49 14-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engine rated at 1,200 horsepower. It had a maximum speed of 356 miles per hour and could reach 10,000 feet in 3 minutes and 54 seconds. It had a range of 650 miles and a service ceiling of 36,000 feet, although it's often cited as flying much higher. For instance, Colonel Robert Lee Scott photographed the peaks of Mount Everest from it at 44,000 feet. It had 250 caliber M2 Browning machine guns mounted in the cowl and a 30 caliber M2 Browning machine gun in each wing. It was a strange order as the craft, while exceeding the initial performance requirements, was clearly inadequate, lacking maneuverability, armor, or self-sealing fuel tanks. But perhaps these orders were in large measure an expedient to keep the new company solvent until it completed design and production plans for the P-47. So despite a keen interest in the emerging P-47, the AP-10 project was having ongoing delays, resulting in an order of a further 80 PC-43A variants. The P-43A upgraded the armament, with 50 caliber machine guns replacing the 30s in the wings. 
It also sported the 1400 horsepower Pratt and Whitney R2180 twin Hornet engine. However, the U.S. Army Air Corps considered the P-43 and its variants obsolete as soon as delivered. Indeed, in mid-1942, all surviving P-43s were redesignated RP-43, indicating its permanent change in role as a training aircraft. But not all P-43s were so relegated. 125 P-43A1s were built for China with Lend-Lease funds in its war against Japan. This version included rudimentary armor and protection for the wing fuel tanks, as well as a hard point for 200 pounds of bombs. 108 of P-43A1s were sent to the Republic of China, and several of the remaining 17 went to the Royal Australian Air Force as photo-reconnaissance aircraft. Just transit to China proved disastrous for the P-43s. They developed fuel tank leaks that combined with the turbo supercharger beneath the fuselage, and more than a few caught fire and killed their pilots, including 4th Group Commander and renowned fighter pilot Cheng Xiao Yu. Eventually, commander of the Chinese Air Force General Mao Peng Tzu declared the P-43 unsuitable for combat use. The Flying Tigers, an American volunteer group headed by Claire Chennault, made temporary repairs to the aircraft in an effort to rehabilitate it. Colonel Robert Lee Scott flew the fighters on familiarization flights, scouting missions, and escorted transport planes over Burma during April and May. Scott even found time to fly over the Himalayas and take motion pictures of Mount Everest, reaching 44,000 feet in the process. However, the leaks reoccurred and the P-43s were grounded. It wasn't until August 17, 1942, after further repairs were made, the P-43 entered combat for the first time. Two P-43s and two Curtis P-40 Warhawks attempted to intercept a Kawasaki Ki-45. The Warhawks soon fell behind, and although one Lancer got within range, its guns jammed, and the Ki-45 escaped after a high-speed chase. P-43 Lancers in the now U.S. 75th Fighter Squadron, formed from the Volunteer Force, performed in only non-combat missions such as photo reconnaissance. While in the Chinese Air Force, the fighter found a minor role as ground strafers, interceptors, photo reconnaissance, and along with P-40s as bomber escorts. But the P-43 did not play a major role in the air war in China. This was primarily due to the small numbers in which it was committed to combat. Because of their small numbers and distribution among the squadrons, seldom did more than one or two P-43s fly on any given mission. And it's important to note, when the USAAF adopted self-sealing fuel tanks as standard in 1941, aircraft like the P-43 became a non-combat aircraft in that service. To the best of my knowledge, only one pilot was awarded while flying a Lancer. On September 12, 1942, Major Frank Scheel, commander of the 74th, flew a reconnaissance mission to Hanoi. Three enemy fighters rose to intercept, but Scheel avoided them and returned with information that led to a successful bombing mission a few days later. Scheel was awarded the Silver Star. In an interesting tidbit, further development of the P-43 continued in the form of a lightweight version using a Pratt & Whitney R-2180 engine, resulting in the XP-44 prototype. But with it lacking in power, Republic switched to the right R-2600. But this engine could not be turbo-supercharged, and Republic finally modified the design again this time to the enormous 1850-horsepower Pratt & Whitney R-2800 double WASP engine. The resulting aircraft, now known as the P-44 rocket, was truly impressive. Capable of speeds of 404 miles per hour at 20,000 feet and a climb rate of 4,000 feet per minute, the aircraft could have been an exceptional interceptor. However, its range was now even more limited than the Lancer which was unfortunate as the Army Air Force was now specifying requirements for a long-range bomber escort. Thus, the P-44 rocket, while receiving an official designation, was never built. 
and there is some speculation if the Lancer was adopted more widely, its performance at high altitude would have helped fend off the Japanese Type II fighter, which emphasized combat above 20,000 feet. Maybe. But alas, all the P-43 Lancer offers is a testament to the iterative process of engineering and the stepping stone to its successor, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and press the like button. If you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell.